Hello everyone! I wanted to give you an update of what's coming in regards to changes to mesh lights in DAS Studio 4.21. I know, I know, I know, we've already had changes to mesh lights in DAS Studio 4.20 and many of you didn't like them, but uh, there's a new thing that's being rolled out in a new version that's coming and I wanted to give you a little update preview. I've mentioned this recently in a DAS stream on New Year's Eve. And I thought I'm going to make it more concise and cohesive video about that. Here's my super exciting scene. I'm going to go and switch this over to iRay and show you what I've made here. I have a ground plane at the on the floor here. We have our sphere, which is like a stand-in for a person, for a character that you might want to shoot. And I have a softbox on the left and on the right here. This one, they're just two regular planes. This one has already been turned into an emissive surface or uh, into a mesh light or into a ghost light, whatever you want to call it. And this one hasn't. So I'm going to go and do that on my mesh light here, mesh light number two. Uh, just in case you are not familiar with how to create mesh lights, you head over to surfaces, head over to emission, and then here you set a color, anything other than black, that will bring up additional properties. So I'm gonna go and turn this into white mesh light, hit OK, and then these additional properties come up here. And nothing seems to be happening. It's glowing a little bit, but just not as bright as the one on the left. So what I tend to do, is switch the luminance units to watts, and then give that a higher value you here like say 300 okay perfect that's now the same as the mesh light on the left here so while this gives really really nice light we do see the two emitters in our render and that might not be what you want and that used to be very difficult to hide them as of das studio 4.20 you could crank down the cutout opacity and then compensate with luminance, but that might give you fireflies if you're shooting directly through the emitter like so, which wouldn't be possible in real life. But if you had to do that in the 3D world, then that was a bit of a problem. So the friendly folks at iRay have exposed two new properties that can help with that. Do you remember on the regular parametric lights that we create with these things here, uh, the spotlight or the point light, we do actually have a switch that can switch this on and off. And we have something similar now with mesh lights. And that is courtesy of two little scripts namely the ghost light factor property and the IRA visible to primary rays property scripts. So these need to be executed on your mesh lights to expose additional properties that makes that possible. Rob from DAS has kindly put together this forum post that I'm going to link to in the description of this video in which he gives you an explanation as well as these two scripts at the bottom here. In fact, we get uh, three demo scenes, this one, this one, and that one. Those are all scenes, the DAF files, and then the DAF DSE ones say those are the scripts and those are the ones that I've copied into my folder here so I can easily access them here from, from here. So what we need to do on my mesh light on the left, I'm going to go and execute this first script here, iRay visible to primary rays. When I do that, nothing seems to happen in the scene. And that's because on the parameters tab, under display, we now have this Boolean property here exposed. If I switch back to my other mesh light that I haven't run the script on, you can see that that property doesn't exist. So this only happens when you run the script. And then you can just toggle that off and that makes my mesh light disappear. Well, almost. So first of all, it's gone and I can shoot through it and it's clean. There's no fireflies. This is all exactly what we want. But of course, to the trained eye, you will see that the reflection of my emitter is still there. So in reality, you probably don't have a 100% reflective surface on the bottom. But uh, you might have some reflection, and this is exactly what I have. So I'm going to leave it 100% reflective just to show you how to remove that. And this is where that second script comes in handy. So once again, we go over with that mesh light selected and execute that, the ghost light factor property. And when I do that, once again, nothing is happening, but that's because another parameter is being smuggled in. And that's this slider here, the iRay ghost light factor. A value, anything other than one will make a change. So I'm going to go and do that. So it, from what I understand, it doesn't matter exactly what you put in there, but one means nothing's changed. But if you put something like two, then you will see that 
my reflection certainly changes and it's almost almost gone so it's still visible but it's almost almost gone and uh, this now has to do with the surface properties of your mesh light so with that set to anything other than one head over to the surfaces tab of that mesh light and search for a value called refraction so a refraction and then we have the refraction index and the refraction weight refraction index uh, we're going to set this to one so that means it looks looks like air and then the refraction weight we're also going to set that to one like so and then boom lo and behold it is completely gone it's exactly what we want so rob explains this and he says that these two scripts will be included with a new set of default resources that we're going to see in an updated version of DAS Studio. I'm not entirely sure if that's going to be DAS Studio 4.22, if that's going to be a, a kind of a major minor update, or if it's just going to be an incremental update that's also going to be called DAS Studio 4.21. Currently, as of the time of recording of this video, which is the 10th of January 2023, this works with the latest beta version of DAS Studio, which is 4.21.1. 1.26 which hasn't been it's not the release version this is the beta version and you get that of course from das 3d.com forward slash das hyphen studio hyphen beta if you want to test that out so that's where these two scripts will work and in an upcoming update for the release version these scripts will be included i would imagine it's also possible to turn that into a one click script so maybe we'll see that as well but this is how it works for now. Also, one other thing that I wanted to mention is that it looks like none of the functionality that is currently implemented with Ghost Lights as it is right now with the release version, none of that has changed. So anything that you've tweaked in order to make your scenes work, that will still work. And this is going to be an incremental update that, that you can use, but it's not going to remove any functionality that you have there. If you have any doubts about that, I would always recommend that you leave the release version as it is right now download the beta version which installs itself separately and side by side to the release version and test this out before you upgrade the release version just in case you don't want to risk breaking any of your scenes that was it for today thank you so much for watching have fun with the new ghost lights and as soon as this comes out as a release thing i'm going to make a video on the das channel about this thanks for watching take care Bye bye